On today's World Insight, an epidemic of irrational fear over the coronavirus outbreak. Why do races slurs in a time of crisis? And a digital shift in the global economy despite uncertainty. Executives from a Russian fund in Alibaba talk about strategy. Uh, we believe that there is a new development paradigm that's really emerged uh, thanks to uh, digital uh, technology. Here's our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Tian Wei. We begin with the coronavirus outbreak in China. The nation's total number of confirmed cases is now over 28,000, with 564 deaths as of Thursday. And there are more than 24,000 suspected cases already. And the numbers, well, the coronavirus has brought with it reports of racial profiling and xenophobia against Chinese and even Asians in different parts of the world. Let's take a look at this. I guess it's really upsetting um, and it feels hurtful that people see me as a threat. Heidi Chow was on a train in London last week with her husband and children when she noticed a man leave the empty carriage they were on to move to another one. But because I look Chinese or from East Asia, therefore I must have the coronavirus. And um, yeah, so it's quite hurtful to think that people are thinking that of me when I go into a room or when I go into a, onto public transport. She says the same thing has happened to her a number of times in the past few weeks, with people trying to avoid her in public spaces. The risk of me getting, having coronavirus is the same as any other non-Chinese person um, in London or in the UK because I haven't been to China in the last two weeks. In fact, I've, never, I've only been to China probably a, a, for a day trip 25 years ago. As international concern over the coronavirus grows, it's fueling reports of discrimination against Chinese people, including here in Europe. It's led the UN to speak out on the issue, saying no amount of fear can excuse hatred. The UK government has also urged people to avoid any hysteria. The rejection that this whole house demonstrates to any racism, and insensitivity towards the Chinese community here or indeed uh, visitors um, here of Chinese origin uh, because that will not help us tackle this disease. Some members of the UK's Chinese community say they've witnessed a rise in racist behaviour recently that's coincided with the spread of this outbreak. But many also say this isn't anything new. It seems dealing with racism has become a normal part of life for some East Asians, even those who were born and raised in this country. For 20 years, Dr. Diana Ye has been studying the history of Chinese people on these shores. She says the coronavirus has been racialized as something specifically linked to China. I think we've seen this time and time again throughout history. Um, there's always been a kind of latent racism, I would say, against the Chinese in Britain as um, globally, um, with yellow peril from the 19th century um, straight up to, you know, we can think about SARS 2003. Social media is also playing a role in France and other parts of Europe where cases of racism have been reported. The hashtag I'm not a virus has led to shows of support for victims of sinophobia. I am not a virus. That is the slogan and hashtag circling around the world. For more about this on these xenophobia listedly, we have witnessed that together with the coronavirus, we are joined in Berlin. Dr. Li Yayu, political neuroscientist. She is with Columbia University and she is now living in Berlin. And in Washington, D.C., we are joined by Professor Christopher Chambers, professor of journalism from Georgetown University. Now, now, to both of you, I have to say, xenophobia is not something new because you've been working in journalism and you've been working in the uh, scientific circle as well. So you know what it is all about. But how would you see the latest round of xenophobia? It seems that China now, or Chinese, is equal to a coronavirus. Isn't that a very scare, scareful? thought if you look at the reality these days, of Professor Chambers? Well, it, it is nothing new, this kind of racism and this kind of xenophobia. 
I think what is new is that um, in the past, the United States and European powers have felt uh, superior to China. Now China is a major world power economically, militarily, et cetera, et cetera. So that increases the anxiety uh, of, 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 of these, uh, uh, of, of these you know, um, European and, and, and American governments and, and societies. Um, you also have a great interdependence of economies and many, many Chinese uh, stu excuse me, students who are uh, studying abroad in the United States and in Europe. So that's, that's the, cha the game changer right there. Mm, it is the game changer. China, of course, is more visible. The Chinese are everywhere in the world. Uh, Li Ya, you know that very well because you are living now in Berlin. You earlier have been associated with Columbia University. So you also been interviewed by German media about this. So what is your take? Is that a very special take compared to Professor Chambers? Well, I come from two perspectives. One is as a researcher studying the political brain, the brain, uh, brains that we all have across cultures, racism that we all have in our brains across cultures. And then I come at it from a very personal level, which is I am German Chinese. I am a German Huaren. So I get to experience it on both levels. Um, so I can tell you the racism is real. Um, it is felt in Germany, um, especially I think the media, the press, should have a special responsibility in a liberal democracy such as Germany to protect its minorities um, and not to gang up on one minority. But then as a scientist I also have to tell you that unfortunately from an evolutionary perspective we all have racist brains. Um, so you can see exclusion happening not only in Germany but also in other countries and even within China we can see exclusion mm. happening towards Hubei people, towards Wuhan people. Mm -hmm. So this is a moment where we all need to think how do we want our societies to look like? How much does discrimination matter to us in the 21st century? Yes, indeed. And finally I should say mm. racism towards Chinese is some... Go ahead. Racism towards Chinese is something that is often denied. So Chinese, Chinese are often um, discriminated against in a very subtle way. Um, namely, in a, a we are uh, de uh, dehumanized as machines. So Asians, just as Jews, are often seen as very competent, uh, uber-efficient, but lacking human warmth, human individu individuality, human creativity. We have to prove ourselves doubly so that we are human. All and right. so this is why this virus outbreak is so devastating, because we are, again, uh, equated to a virus, to something so impersonal. And the research shows, finally, uh, Tianwei, the research shows that the outcome of this subtle dehumanization towards Chinese and Asians is aggression and violence. So the consequences are real, they're dangerous, and we need to fight them. Right. It's a beautiful answer you just given. Let's take a look at the issue by layers. First of all, this is an epidemic in China. It is not yet an outbreak in other parts of the world. So why people are so scared and so fearful as if the coronavirus is around them on a daily basis, as if there will be hundreds and thousands of people around them already uh, sacrifice their life as a result. Uh, uh, Professor Chambers, how much misinformation, in fact, is involved here? And how much fear is being created or geared up as a result of ignorance, first of all? Well, it's, it's, it's the fault of, of, say, in the United States, the American media and political leaders to face up to this kind of, uh, of racism and misinformation. Because an aspect of, say, the racist brain is not admitting, you know, not wanting to look in the mirror at yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. Because if you look at the United States, we have had a flu epidemic here since October 1st, and the media does not report on it. 10,000 people, over 10,000 Americans, have died between October and January. Five million cases of our influenza A and B have been reported mm. since October 1st of 1999. Children, elderly, have died. 60,000 people have been hospitalized. I, was, I contracted uh, our influenza B along with my wife and other members of my family. But you don't see the American media or political leaders 
talking about that. And many times when Chinese Americans contract the flu or even a cold, the one that's devastated the United States since the autumn, people think it's coronavirus. Well, well that's ridiculous. Mm. So there was a failure of the American media to educate people. There was a failure of our political leaders to um, unleash the information that our own uh, Centers for Disease Control have over our own domestic flu, which is far more deadly than what's going on in China right now. Uh, Mr. Chambers, if I could just uh, follow up. Now, it is a fine balance as to you do not want to have overreactions to scare people. Many believe now the current administration has been having some overreactions toward the coronavirus as the numbers of uh, the, the uh, infected is not that much in the U.S. at least. Uh, however, on the other hand, you do not want to have any chance for the danger of your people. That is just for sure. So uh, the authority also face a fine balance, I guess, the experience, courage, and information. Knowledge here plays a big part. Uh, that's one thing. But on the other hand, how is that related now to the long-term uh, way people look at diseases. Remember H1N1, Latino Americans were being criticized as if they were the virus, as, as if they were the source of the virus. And remember Ebola? African Americans or Africans in different parts of the world uh, have to face up to these kinds of xenophobia as well. So it seems that there is an evolution of this existing xenophobia uh, popping up at times when virus is going around, it is a companion of the virus. This is the moral virus we're having right now, which is even probably more dangerous than the coronavirus itself. Uh, Professor Chambers, quick response. Yes, well, that, that's always been the case in human history. I mean, even the, the uh, bubolic plague was thought of as a, a scourge from God because uh, Europeans have been interacting too much with uh, people from uh, Central Asia and, 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 and East Asia. So, I mean, it, this is nothing new. I mean, this is, this is something that goes hand in hand with uh, infections, and they create the situation where, where these infections can become pandemics mm -hmm. because people are afraid to seek medical help. Mm. Leah, how do you see that? I mean, this thing has been going on and on and on, even though we are now 2020, the year 2020. Yes, absolutely. I think, um, you know, I have a slightly different take. So I think it's very important not to shame people for their brain reactions um, that are motivated by fear. So when people are afraid, when they're basically in fight flight mode, when they think their life is in danger, people will act irrationally. And I don't want to blame people for that because this is how our social brains work. But what I do want to blame elites uh, politicians, uh, people in the media, people in education, is if mm. they keep continuing to steer up that fear. Um, their role is to dissipate their fear, uh, this fear. Their role is to basically tell people, I understand if you see a Chinese person and you're afraid, but let's break this down. Let's see if it really makes sense rationally. And I think one very important role that Chinese abroad everywhere um, that they have and that they can take is that we humanize ourselves to the world. That's why we say, I am not a virus. We say, I am part of this society. You cannot uh, view me as this total foreign object. I am also German. I am also American. And I am Chinese. So I think that is really important. And I think it's difficult for the, Asian dia sorry, for the Chinese diaspora because culturally we're not really used to speaking up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're used to being quiet. We're used to sort of being grateful that we've been given our lives. And I say we need to make ourselves public. We need to humanize ourselves. We need to be courageous. Right. Um, and uh, we need to really take an equal seat at the table in these societies, not seeing ourselves as the perpetual foreign other who doesn't deserve to be treated as a full human being. Mm. Leah, you brought up a very great point. That is, how can we communicate with the rest of the world? That's a beautiful point because it's not just about the coronavirus and the xenophobia that we have to fight 
fight against. It is also on a daily basis how Chinese these days, as Professor Chambers earlier illustrated, have become very different from what people believe as it used to be. Uh, and how they, to communicate with the rest of the world? Is anger going to do the work? Is uh, fear and also self-protection only going to do the work? Or is going out there, talk to people with humor and not with finger pointing, that's going to do the work? I don't know. I'm asking you, both of you as experts. Leah, you go ahead. Well, I think there are two ways. I think you can humanize yourself in a very direct way, which is, you know, there's social media, there's talking to people. You can even speak to people saying, hey, are you afraid about the coronavirus? Ask me something. Ask me about how my family is affected. Mm -hmm. There's been a fantastic uh, one-man show in Italy, in Firenze, where basically a Chinese person put a mask on, put uh, blinds on over their eyes, yeah. and they said, I am not a virus in Italian. Please stop the prejudice. And after a while, people went up to him and hugged him. Him. It was very, very emotional. You know, can I hug a Chinese? Will I get infected? So that's one channel. But I also would want to say there's a political channel. Sometimes Asians abroad, we don't like to think politically in terms of rights, but we have rights. There are anti-discrimination uh, 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 places that you can complain to in your, uh, you know, various European countries. Um, there are associations that you can go to. Mm. Make yourself public. To me right now, although it's, it's a dark moment for the Chinese diaspora, to me it is a great opportunity because at no point in Germany, for decades, mm. we have not talked about the position of Chinese and Asians in German society. I think this is an opportunity and we can seize it and viruses will pass, but I think our voice, we can make that stronger and that will persist. This is a very interesting point. Also go to you, Professor Chambers, uh, about that. Is this the best time to communicate? Uh, how to communicate? What is the best way to communicate? It's not just about let me persuade you. It's about let's improve together. Let's get scientific information. Let's be able to face up to the disease together because it's going to be a global village, as we say. He global health is a global issue. So, Professor Chambers, your take here. Well, we can forget <coughs> American political leaders and American media. They are hardwired as a business model to be sensationalist. So it's going to have to be between scientific and medical communities and at a grassroots level. We have Chinese students uh, from China and Chinese American students at Georgetown and, uh, who have actually said, you know, our domestic flu is more of a threat to us than coronavirus is to anybody and have, and have talked about this. We have you know, epidemiological students um, from China and Chinese American who are showing this, uh, how devastating our domestic flu is and that has helped bridge some gaps and, 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 and dissipate some hysteria uh, about coronavirus. So it's going to have to be a grassroots kind of a thing and something where our, uh, our, our mutual medical and research um, institutions right. uh, bridge gaps because we cannot depend on, our, on the media, we cannot depend on politics. Right. Uh, before we go, I just want to show everybody this latest number so that we have an idea as to where the coronavirus uh, has already spread to, to what degree. The latest the flu surveillance from the U.S. Uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention reported that as of January, there were 15 million cases of flu and 8,200 deaths in the U.S. during this flu season. And for the coronavirus in China so far, there are more than 28,000 confirmed cases, a death toll of 550, and there are 12 reported cases in the U.S., five in Canada. And, of course, there are about 30 in Japan. As we speak, the number might be increasing, but we want to see the facts before we go and comment about it. We also want to see, no matter under what circumstances, we are together. We have to fight this together because this is global health. I want to thank both of you for taking your precious time helping us to understand the issue much clearer. Um, Li Ya Yu and... Christopher Chamber. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. All the best. Be healthy. Thank you. Thank you.